Now, one of the major differences between a, an oscilloscope and a television set is that the television really wants to have as big a picture as possible. This is a 1950s version television. And you can see the picture now, the CRT is much bigger than on a, uh, a, an oscilloscope. The, the electrostatic system is limited in how far you can move the beam and how far it can go away. If you get the plates too far apart so that they can move the beam more, uh, you lose your linearity and you can't make scientific measurements. It, it's, a, it's a long, narrow kind of tube that's used in here because then everything is very linear and you're not relying on the electrostatic lenses to give you a bigger picture. It's more important in this application to have a very linear system so that you know exactly what's going on and everything is calibrated. It, it turns out you never can get a really big picture. To get a big picture like this, you need some way to steer the beam wider. And the solution to that was to use a series of magnifying glasses, basically. The early televisions had a physical magnifying glass. In the CRT, we have the electron gun on this end. And, but in this case, there's a, a magnetic structure here and up here. And we can actually start to move the beam faster. And since we know exactly how fast it has to go, we can use a magnetic deflection for both the horizontal and the vertical. And at the same time, there is a, 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 all the way in the front there, there is the magnifying lens, if you will. It's an electron beam lens, though, instead of a standard glass lens. In a television, you need two types of, of timekeeping. The first one is the radio frequency timekeeping so that you can receive each of the channels and select the channel you want to you want to watch. That's usually done with a very accurate crystal system. The second one is you want to synchronize the sweep back and forth and up and down that makes the picture. That's a much lower frequency and isn't really done well with crystals. And it's done with a conventional uh, capacitor and, and current source. So the oscilloscope needs to have varying time bases and amplifiers that are linear with respect to the incoming voltage. Whereas in a television system, all you're trying to do is have a beam go across and, and continue back and forth. And to get a picture, you vary how many electrons are hitting the face. If just a few are there, it'll be dark. And if you have a lot of electrons, it'll be light. So you're making up a, uh, a picture in a television tube that all it needs to do is always go back and forth at exactly the same speed. You don't want it to, to vary at all and it has to be synchronized with the time base that, that the camera is using. So a camera starts at the top and, and, and scans down a picture then goes back to the top and scans down again you have to know when all of that's happening and time the receiver. And the tubes you see here are amplifier tubes for the radio frequency, the television frequency. And then they, they detect what the signal is for the frequency you're looking at for channel six. 
versus channel 12 or 13. Then once you have the signal out, then you have to push it into the, the actual showing of the picture on the screen.